Hey everybody, it's Dr. Sierra, and I just wanted to first welcome you to the webinar. Um, I'm a wellness chiropractor here in Venice, Florida, and this webinar is going to focus on how we can all stay healthy during the quarantine. So um, I hope you guys are ready. If you need um, any resources or if you're looking for um, what's going on during the webinar, make sure you're checking the comments boxes. Um, that's where I'm gonna be showing um, links and things like that that you guys have access to. Um, my main goal with this webinar is to help you all stay on track with your health goals during this time. I know it's been a very difficult time for most of us. So um, the goal of this webinar is to give you some tips and ideas on how to stay on track during this time. Um, and I'm here to support you. So if you need to reach out to me, my email is drleesierra at gmail.com. Of course, you can find me on YouTube or Facebook, or you can always give me a call. And um, I'll be happy to chat with you if you need some personal support. So um, I'm just going to share my screen so we can get going here. So let's do this. So I'm going to let you guys all see my entire screen as I go through this presentation. So um, if you have comments or questions, post them in the comment box and I will be um, answering those for you. And I will tell you that this is my first time doing a webinar, so uh, hopefully there's no glitches, but let's get going. All right, so how to stay healthy during this um, quarantine. So first and foremost, um, questions, drop them in the comment box and I will reply. You'll also see some links to resources that will be available to you, as well as just links to different things that I've been utilizing during this time. Um, so make sure you're watching for those. Um, I will be live answering questions as well. So first and foremost, um, today I'm going to cover five areas. I'm going to talk about stress, nutrition, exercise, how to minimize toxins and different things you can use for immune boost boosters. But before we um, start learning the new things, let's all stop what we're doing. Uh, put your papers down, make sure you have um, nothing distracting you and let's all take a deep breath. So breathe in and breathe out. Close your eyes. Just take a few seconds of breathing. All right, are we guys ready? Let's get going. So. Stress. Stress is crazy right now. There's so much going on that's causing us to have an in increase in stress, whether it's from your fear of getting sick or you've been working from home with your kids and you have such a change in environment. Um, also, of course, most of you know there's tons of small business struggles going on right now, um, and it can really affect your mind and your body for the months to come. So um, what we want to make sure we're not doing is dwelling on this stress and looking for ways how we can avoid it and combat it as where it's coming towards us. Because one of the biggest problems with stress is it's going to start weakening the immune system. It can also lead to issues such as depression and insomnia and things like that. So once this period of time is over, we want to make sure that we are back to our normal routines and um, able to combat that stress. So let's talk about different ways that we can combat that stress. So number one, making sure that you are taking time for yourself. So especially those of you who are parents or maybe you're a caregiver for a loved one, um, take a few minutes, take a walk around the block. Um, those of you that are parents of little kids, maybe that means you need to go in the bathroom for five minutes. Um, go in a closet, go in the, a dark space and just close your eyes and do some of that deep breathing that we just started with. Um, maybe you wanna take an online exercise class or do some sort of meditation that can help with this. Um, the second way that we want to start trying to combat stress is making sure that you're still sleeping, um, making sure you're getting your full seven to eight hours of sleep. I know that one of the biggest problems with working from home is we're not having any sort of change in environment. So maybe we're being glued to our computer all the time, or maybe we are um, not focusing on turning off the electronics an hour before bed, or we're just catching up on different things, especially if for those of us who are not accustomed to having our kids at home all the time with us, um, you know, we may need to set an alarm, take a minute and making sure that you are still getting your full seven to eight hours of sleep. Um, meditation is another great way. In the comments, you're going to see a couple links to some different meditations that I have talked about in the past. They're quick, they're easy, even a 15 to 20 minute meditation can really help lower your stress. So when you're looking for um, 
different meditations. If you're a beginner, make sure you're selecting beginner meditation and it's going to walk you through that. Um, another app that I really like to use is an app called Headspace. Um, right now they're having tons of great deals. There's a lot of free resources out there and I'm going to post a link here in the comments for that app. But basically on Headspace, they'll have guided meditations that you can do. There's free ones. Um, right now, if you are a healthcare provider listening to this, um, you can actually get Headspace for six months for free, which is awesome. And they have a lot of other resources for different areas um, like first responders and things like that. And then um, another great way to relieve stress is making sure you're getting some walking in. Um, one of the things I was noting the other day as I was preparing for this, so those of you that have gone from working in an office to working at home, your step count, if you have an um, Apple Watch or if you're counting it on a Fitbit or something like that, probably has decreased dramatically. You're not even walking from the parking lot to your office anymore. You're not getting up to go as far to the bathroom. Um, there's a lot of different things that we are not doing. Maybe we would take a, a walk at lunch with our coworkers, or maybe we would even just um, get up and go to the water cooler a couple times a day. So our walking has dramatically decreased. So that's another great way to start combating your stress. I um, mean, of course, exercise. Exercise releases endorphins and it helps us feel better. It's also great for our bodies. So, um, and I'm going to have a whole section on exercise um, coming up here in a little bit. So number one, we're going to combat stress. The second area I want to talk about in ways to stay healthy during the quarantine is making sure um, we're eating right. You know, and this probably is an area where most of us have been struggling because we're at home all the time. Um, I see meme after meme of people going to the pantry and getting snacks or our kids are bored and they're saying, I want snacks. I want to do this. Or we're just, you know, plainly we're at home and we're not as busy as we normally are. So we're snacking and we're grazing. We're also eating foods that we're not accustomed to. Um, I think, you know, when all of this started, a lot of us were a little worried about what was going on with the grocery stores. And we went out and bought a bunch of foods that we don't normally have packaged things, processed things. Um, and, you know, now we have all those and we don't want to waste them, but they're really not healthy for our body. So first I want to start touching on um, what we're going to avoid. And I'm also going to share some alternatives for you guys um, on how to stay healthy during this time as far as food goes. So first and foremost, um, we want to avoid sugar. So sugar, it can put a huge detriment to our immune system. What it does is it actually binds to protein molecules that are called and through a process called glycation. And during this time, harmful compounds such as AGEs, so I always joke that they're for aging, are produced. And that actually hinders the immune system, which can cause disease. Um, another thing that can cause this glycation process is really starchy carbohydrates. So we want to make sure that we're watching out for those. I know that Easter just passed. And um, we probably have some candy lingering around. Um, now is a good time to uh, start throwing away or getting rid of some of that candy, donating it to someone else um, and making sure that we're not loading up on that and, you know, spacing that throughout the day. Yes, I understand we all want to have treats and things like that. But the problem is it's becoming the norm and it's not becoming a treat anymore. Um, I just wanted to go back to talking about different food resources, um, you know, when we talk about the grocery stores, yes, we all were a little worried that we were going to have issues getting things, and we did for a while. Now I notice when I go back to the grocery store that things are really fully stocked, um, and there's a lot of services to help you get healthy groceries, so making sure you're still getting produce and things like that. Um, and I'm going to post those links in the comments. Detweilers now has drive up. Um, you can order your groceries, and they'll bring them right out to your car and put them right in your trunk. Um, I use Shipt, which is a way that I get my groceries from Target or Publix and things like that. Um, it's been very helpful. It's being used a lot more currently. So you want to make sure that you're um, planning ahead and ordering your stuff in advance. I know it took two days for my grocery order to be able to be placed, but that's OK. You know, I was um, prepared, so I was able to wait those two days. It wasn't a big deal. Um, Publix also has Instacart in most areas. So I just wanted to give you guys some links to those resources. So if you haven't tried those or you're, you know, focusing on, you know, staying inside and really avoiding going out or maybe you have a compromised immune system, that's a great way that you can get healthy, fresh produce and things like that on a regular basis versus going to the store. So the other thing we want to do during this time as far as nutrition goes is start replacing um, 
your foods with healthy fats and proteins. Healthy fats and proteins are going to lower inflammation. Proteins are going to help us stay full longer. Um, and they're also going to help keep our bodies on track. Your brain is made up of fat. So we want to make sure that you're eating healthy fats in order for it to function properly. Um, so in the comment section here, you'll see a list of healthy fats. Um, one of the main ones that um, I usually recommend to people start doing is eating more avocados, using coconut oil. Um, extra virgin olive oil is a great healthy fat. If you're going to be doing any kind of cooking, you want to make sure that you're using coconut oil if you're cooking on high heat, heat excuse me, or if you're using um, extra virgin olive oil, you're never heating that above medium. Um, but this list right here can give you some great ideas and how you can start getting some more healthy fats into your routine. They'll keep you fuller, longer, and again, they'll keep that inflammation down, which we can often get from eating the bad foods or bad fats that um, are loaded in a lot of packaged processed things that we eat. So what else can you do to um, help keep your bodies healthy and strong when it comes from a nutrition standpoint? So um, first, I want to share with you some different snack ideas um, that we're going to be talking about a little bit later. And I also want to share some different things that I use at my house in order to keep my nutrition on track and especially keep my immune system strong. So the first one is elderberry. So if you have followed my page on Facebook for a while, or if you've been to any of the workshops we've had here at the office, um, elderberry syrup is a great way to build your immune system. Um, and they've really been gaining popularity and it's for a really good reason. Um, they've been used a long time. They actually grow here um, on the side of the road. You can see them sometimes. And they've been used throughout history to treat a lot of infections. Um, they're a very powerful nutrient and um, they're critical for helping with the immune function. So there's been a lot of research studies out there right now, um, and people who have used elderberry syrup have found that they get relief from the flu symptoms um, four days faster compared to a placebo. Um, I can post a link to that research study if you'd like. I also purchased elderberry for me and my family from a local source. Um, it's called Holly's Magic Syrup, and I'm going to tag her in this post here so that way you guys um, have a resource for that. That's something that you know we use on a regular basis at our house. Um, I have two kids. One's three and one is one. And I feed it to them as well so I can help keep their immune system strong. Um, it tastes really good. We use it like syrup on our um, healthy pancakes that I make for my kids, as well as you can just drink, have a tablespoon of it or um, if you have a kid, a teaspoon of it. So it's a really great, great way to um, have additional immune boosting qualities in your foods. Then another way to do that is through citrus fruits. Um, they are a huge source of vitamin C, which is an essential nutrient for um, a healthy immune system. It's also an antioxidant, so it helps improve the production and effectiveness of your white blood cells. And white blood cells are the ones that are fighting um, infections and viruses and things inside your body. So it's um, basically also been shown to help reduce the severity of symptoms if you do get sick. The one thing I would caution you is some citrus fruits, like oranges especially, are quite high in sugar. So I wouldn't sit around and eat three or four oranges. But grapefruits, lemons, limes, things like that, you know, one orange is a great way to start getting some more vitamin C into your system. Um, I do also use a vitamin C supplement for me and my family. Um, vitamin C has been talked a lot about during this time with um, viruses as well as being used to treat viruses in different countries and here as well. So one of the things that we do is we've been taking a super high dose of vitamin C. Um, I have one that I give to my kids because it tastes a little bit better. It's called vitamin C BioFizz, and I'll put it in the comments. It kind of tastes like an orange fizzy drink. And then also there's a powdered vitamin C that um, my husband, myself, my mother, we all take. And it's so we can basically get a super high dose of vitamin C several times throughout the day. So we're having that loaded in our system to help protect our immune systems. So let's talk about snacks. Um, usually when I see a picture like this, I don't think a lot of people are thinking of snack foods. Um, but, you know, produce is a great thing to have as snacks. But the hardest thing I find is that, you know, we are so accustomed in our culture to having snack foods being crunchy things like chips or like grains or, you know, even, you know, just think like popcorn and stuff like that. So rather than fruits and vegetables. So um, obviously fruits and vegetables are great snacks. You can have them with homemade hummus, which is super easy to make. I made some last weekend. It took me all of 10 minutes. Um, that's just canned chickpeas or garbanzo beans, olive oil, and then you can put whatever seasoning you want into it. 
Um, but when it comes to snacking for kids and for some adults, you know, it's hard to find things that seem appealing to us. So great snack foods, maybe even a small smoothie. You can put hidden greens in there. Um, you can put, you know, like I've seen, you've seen before on my Instagram posts and so forth, we do a lot of smoothies for breakfast. Um, but also if you are putting greens or spinach or green food powder in there, it's a great snack food. You can also make those into popsicles. I do that often for my kids. You can buy popsicle molds and then make the smoothies and pour them right into those molds. It's a great way also to use your leftover smoothie ingredients because most of us make a smoothie and there's always just that little bit left. I just pour those right into popsicle molds. Um, ants on a log are another good idea. Little cucumber sandwiches with um, organic cream cheese in the middle or even hummus in the middle. Um, kids like things on skewers so you can cut the sharp end off and then you can put little vegetables or produce or fruits onto skewers. Kids love that. Um, homemade cookies. Um, we make cookies all the time and I don't feel guilty about giving those to my kids because they don't have um, any sugar in them. Also for adults, we like to have sweet things. We want to have um, snacks like that. So um, that I can post the recipe for the cookies that I make in there as well. Um, and if you go to this website, this is by a fellow chiropractor. It's eatsmartmeals.com and I'm going to post the link right now. She has tons of snack recipes on there. She also has a lot of healthy recipes. Um, raw nuts, raisins, cranberries, and if you go on Pinterest or you Google paleo or keto snacks, you are going to find so many different recipes that are out there. Um, when I make smoothies, I also put protein powder in them. So if you're having a snack of a smoothie with protein in it, one of the things that it will do is it'll help curb your hunger for you know a longer period of time. Um, that's why we use protein in the smoothies is to help keep the one get protein into our system, but also to keep our hunger cravings down. So if you are looking for um, healthy protein, I'm going to post a link right here. Um, but also you can use raw eggs if you're buying healthy raw eggs. That's something you can do as well. And also we put green food in our smoothies. So I'll tag a link for that as well. Um, if any of you have questions about that, you know, go ahead and post them below and I'll reply to your comments here. Or if you have protein or greens that you're using and you're like, I don't know if these are the right ones. Um, is this healthy? Are there additives in here that I don't know about? That's fine. Post a link in the comments. Send me a Facebook message. Send me an email and I can help um, you walk you through that kind of stuff. So moving on from nutrition, let's head over to talking about um, exercise. So exercise can really help reduce the risk of illness by many reasons. Number one, it's great for our body. Um, I think we all can agree exercise is something that should be essential to things that we're doing on a daily basis. But also it can reduce the risk of illness because it flushes bacteria out of your system and it helps raise body temperature. The higher your temperature gets, just like when you get a fever, that's how we ward off bacteria and viruses and also kill them in our system. But also it will really help by reducing stress. Um, one of the things about exercise is it releases endorphins into your system, and those are really like uh, natural happy drugs that we all have inside of us. Um, some research has even shown that um, exercise, even just simple walking, can increase your white blood cell counts. So if you are going to try to start exercising, even moderate intensity things are a great way to get started, such as jogging, swimming, if you have a pool or if your pool is still open, um, biking or just going. You know, I used to when I I'm not a huge runner. And one of the things that I used to do is if you're running on a sidewalk or walking on a sidewalk, I would walk and, you know, look at the lines on the sidewalk. And then I would say, OK, next. Next line, I'm going to jog for two, two segments of the sidewalk, or then I keep walking and then I say, I'm going to do that again for two segments. And then you can just work your body up. It also helps get your heart rate up and down, which is similar to that principle of surge training that you've probably heard me talk about if you've any been, been to any of my workshops in the past. Um, but the hardest thing about exercise is actually getting started. So actually taking the time to go out there and do exercise and planning a time in your day for it. I know for me that um, if I don't get up and exercise in the morning before my kids are awake or um, in the morning, right when they get up and things like that, I'm never going to do it. When I get home at white night, I'm too tired and I'm spending time with my family. So that's not when I'm going to be able to exercise. So um, for me, getting up and doing it first thing is um, ideal. Walking right now is a great thing to be doing, especially getting some fresh air if we've all been cooped up. But also when you're walking outside, um, you're going to start getting your vitamin D. If you did my challenge um, 
last week, one of the days was going out and getting 20 minutes of sunshine because we need 20 minutes of sunshine every day to start getting vitamin D into our system. Now, again, that needs to be midday sun exposure, um, but getting any sun is better than none. And then if you aren't getting enough sun, making sure that you are um, taking a vitamin D supplement to help your immune system stay strong. Um, but if you have little kids, playing with your kids is great exercise. I mean, we run around in our backyard all the time. Um, I'm sure most of you have seen the uh, little lawnmowers. Our lawnmower is quite worn out because we just spend all day running around in our yard. My son loves it. And we chase him around with that little lawnmower. Um, but also making sure that you are just finding something that is enjoyable to you. Um, exercise shouldn't be, well, it should be a little bit painful. You might get sore if you haven't done it in a while, but it should be something that you really enjoy. Um, right now, there are so many free resources out there for exercise. Um, if you go, I'm going to post a link right now. This is an article that was posted by Shape Magazine. It's free online workouts that are going on right now. And there's about 20 different places that you can go online and do the these free workouts. I know Peloton is offering it. YouTube has tons of videos. Planet Fitness has it. Um, my gym is hosting online sessions. So we can go online and do a Zoom meeting. So we're still working out with our trainers or we can watch it later if it's not um, a time that's good for us. If you go on Max T3, which is Maximize Living's YouTube channel, you can um, see there's tons of Max Living workouts out there that are available to you right now. So um, those are just some different ideas. Um, also, if you haven't been getting up and even just doing any movement, one of the best things that you can do for yourself is setting a timer at your desk so you're not sucked into your work. Um, this is just not for now. This is for all the time. Um, if you didn't see my video last week, and I'll post it in the comment section, um, how to set up your desk ergonomically, then that's something that you can check out. But also at the end of that video, I talk about how to do some wobble seat exercises at your desk to make sure that you're um, basically keeping your body and your spine moving. It's not good for our bodies to sit there on a regular basis and just be stagnant. So setting a timer, getting up and walking around every hour, half hour is really a great thing to be doing. So sunshine, sunshine is essential to our health. Um, basically the way that your body works, and I was touching on this a few minutes ago, is when your skin comes in contact with the sunlight, it produces vitamin D for the body. Um, vitamin D is also not in a ton of foods. Sometimes it's added in after the fact, which is not um, the best way to get your vitamin D, but basically you want to be trying to get it from the sun. Um, and vitamin D is found to reduce your risk of getting sick. It's also been proven to reduce your risk of certain cancers. Um, and they are not fully sure how vitamin D functions in the body all the time, but they do know that it's critical for immune support. So vitamin D is one of the things that I'm always talking about, making sure that you're taking a vitamin D supplement or, you know, we live in South Florida. So making sure you're getting out that sunscreen free sun exposure for part of the day. So that's 20 minutes. Um, if you're very fair skin like I am, again, I like to make sure that I'm getting my vitamin D exposure. But then on top of that, I'm not putting sunscreen on my body. I'm trying to wear protective clothing because sunscreen has a lot of chemicals in it. Um, but making sure that I'm still getting that sun sun exposure, excuse me, before I put on that protective clothing. So like those fishing shirts, big hats, those are the things that I'm talking about here. So moving on to our next area that we're going to do to stay healthy during the quarantine is minimizing toxins. But, you know, it seems like a given that um, most people know that they should be minimizing toxic exposure. One of the first ways that we're going to do that is by making sure that you're doing proper hand washing. And I'm going to post a link here if you're not familiar with what you actually should be doing for proper hand washing. But that is a way that you are going to cut down on spreading illness to yourself and to others. Um, we shouldn't really, you know, be waiting for pandemics or, you know, a lot of sickness to be coming into our households or, you know, the areas and where we live in to be practicing proper hand washing. Um, you can reduce respiratory illness by 20 percent and diarrhea illness by 30 percent just by using proper hand washing. So you want to make sure that you're lathering your hands, your fingers, getting under your nails and scrubbing for at least 20 seconds before you're rinsing. So the old adage used to always be sing happy birthday twice. Um, there's a lot of different uh, parodies and a lot of different things out there about different songs that people have been doing, singing this to, to get their 20 seconds of hand washing in. Um, so if you're looking for a good laugh, you can go check those out online. 
But here's also um, a link to um, how to do proper hand washing if you're not familiar with it. Or maybe you want to review it with your kids. Or maybe you want to review it just to make sure that you're doing it properly. And you, um, you know, have some stress or anxiety about, I don't know if I'm doing this the right way. Check out this link. It's going to be great for you. All right. Then we're going to talk about cleaning. So when it comes to toxicity, um, we have all been doing a lot of cleaning lately. If you've been to the office, I feel like our office um, smells like rubbing alcohol because that's what we need to do to make sure that we are not spreading or transmitting this virus. Um, bleach is one of the biggest things that people have been using for cleaning because it is known to kill the virus. Um, one of the things that I'm going to post right here in the comment section is a list to make sure that the cleaning products that you are using at home has been proven to kill the coronavirus. Um, if you're using other cleaners, they may not be proven to kill that. So you want to make sure that you're checking this list out, making sure your disinfectants and cleaning products are on this list. It'll, it's a very easy source. You just search for the name of the product you're using and check it out. Um, they're working great now, but over time, prolonged use of those, even after this epidemic is over, um, can cause toxicity to our system. They're really hard on your lungs and breathing them in. So um, you want to make sure you're following the guidelines, but there are some natural products out there that have been shown to be able to kill the coronavirus while protecting your immune system, your lungs and your skin and so forth and things like that. So um, one of them is called Force of Nature. I just learned about this product recently um, and I'm going to post a link here for you guys to check it out. But it's a non-toxic way to kill the coronavirus as well as bacteria and other viruses. But it's also um, not toxic to your system. Um, it just got approved by the EPA to be um, on their list and you can check it out on that list if you want to look it up yourself. But it's called Force of Nature and I'm posting a link in the comments for you guys so you can check it out in, in your own time. So one of the things I just wanted to touch base on is um, all of us have been at home more often. Maybe our ergonomics at our desk have not been so great, um, especially if we don't, maybe we don't have a workstation at home. Maybe we've been forced to be working from our couch or I had someone tell me the other day they're working from their kitchen table, which is a bar height table and that's not ideal for them. And we have a laptop. So some of the warning signs that our bodies are not functioning properly during this time or even outside this time are listed right here. Headaches, back pain, um, ear infections, reflux, numbness and tingling is a big one, especially if you don't have your dos desk excuse me, properly set up. So um, if you're having any of these warning signs, our office is still open to help take care of you. Um, I am going to post that ergonomic video that I talked about in the link so you can check and see how your desk ergonomics are at home, as well as you can make some modifications or say, hey, I'm not sure if I'm doing this right. Send me a picture of your desk set up and I'll try to help you have your husband or wife or one of your kids take a picture of it. But if you know, okay, I've been doing this right. I have my desk set up as best that I can. And this is still going to go on for another two, three weeks that I might have to be working at home. Um, and you're like, I can't take it anymore. I need to come in and see if there's something that Dr. Sierra can do for me. Um, we are offering a Facebook special right now or a YouTube special where you can come in and get evaluated, check your posture, see how things are going or, you know, help you get out of your symptoms. You can click this link that I'm posting right here and you can sign up to make your own appointment. You can come in. I'll talk to you for about 20, 30 minutes. We'll see what you have going on and see if there's something we can do to help improve, especially your symptoms during this time. So that way you're not dealing with them on a longer term basis. Or maybe, you know what, you've had problems for a while and you're like, hey, Dr. Sierra, I need I can't take it anymore. And I'm ready to take care of it because I have more time on my hands. Um, I'm not. I'm not working or, you know, I have a little more flexibility with my job so I can come in and see you. This is a great time to go ahead and click on this link and you will have access to making your own appointment at your schedule. And we can sit down and talk on how I can help you with some of these um, health challenges that you're facing. So what's next? What are some upcoming opportunities for you guys? So. The next thing that we're going to be offering um, or I'll be offering through um, email as well as through Facebook or Instagram is um, I'm going to offer a 10 day challenge for you guys on how to implement the strategies that we just talked about during this webinar on how to stay healthy during the quarantine, start siphoning out some of those things in your pantry, getting back on track with your exercise goals, maybe getting some more sunshine and things like that. If you did my 14 day challenge, um, a couple weeks ago. It will be similar to this, but it will be new. It'll be specifically on how to implement the strategies that I talked about during um, 
this webinar. So if you're interested in that, make sure you're giving a little like right now or make sure that you're commenting below. This challenge will be run from my Facebook group or you'll need to email me personally to sign up for that. So if you're not in my Facebook group, here's a link for you to sign up. Um, if you are interested in signing up via email, you can send me an email, you can send me a message, you can comment below here and I'll make sure I get in touch with you. But this is um, going to start on Thursday. So make sure you're signed up before Thursday so you get started with day one. One of the main reasons I'm gonna be running it inside my group is because when I did the challenge last time, a lot of people had trouble finding the posts or finding what they needed to do that day. Of course, I'll have support and motivation for you guys during that 10 day challenge, but I will also be um, offering uh, prizes and so forth, just like I did last time. So I hope that all of you enjoyed the webinar. If you did, definitely share this with a friend. It'll be available in the Facebook group as well as on YouTube after this. And um, just let me know if there's any areas that you have need help with or are struggling with, and I can help you get back on track.